Hello students. In this video, we're going to find the max and min of this function, fxy is equal to x times y, subject to this constraint, uh, x squared plus 4y squared equals 16. So we're going to locate the max and mins on this constraint. So this surface will go off to plus or minus infinity, of course, but once we constrain it to this ellipse here, then um, we'll be able to locate the max and mins on this ellipse. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to we're going to let g of x equal x squared plus 4y squared minus 16. So we're going to move the minus 16 over and we're going to write this as this implicit function. And then we're going to take the gradients of f and the gradients of g because we're going to use the Lagrange multiplier method. So the gradient of f of course is y comma x. It's this vector here. And the gradient of g, let's see if we take the partial with respect to x we get a 2x. The partial with respect to y we get an 8y. <coughs> So the Lagrange multiplier equation has gradient of f is equal to lambda gradient of g. And so now um, I take the gradient of f here, which is y comma x, and I take the gradient of g, which is 2x comma 8y, these vectors, and then I'm going to multiply this vector by lambda so that I can get it to stretch or contract to be the same size as this vector. So two vectors are equal to one another when their components are equal to one another. So I'll have y is equal to lambda 2x here for this component, and x is equal to lambda 8y for the second component here. Now, this is a situation where we're going to find that we'll eliminate the lambda. There are some cases where you might have different values of lambda, and I have another video where I discuss that. Um, I'd encourage you to take a look at that scenario as well, but this is the other situation. And here we're going to um, solve for lambda, because you can, and you can see that what's going to occur here if you solve for lambda, you have lambda is equal to y over 2x, and here you'll have lambda is equal to x over 8y. So we'll have, lam um, we'll have those equations are equal to lambda, so they must be equal to one another. Um, if you're in another situation where you could have multiple values of lambda, you would find that um, you would have the same variable. You might have a y on one side of the equation and a y on the other side of the equation, or like a y squared or something on, the other, on this side of the equation to go with the lambda. Um, same thing with the x um, variable. You might have like an x squared on this side. So there you would factor the x's out and then you would see you would get multiple values of lambda. But because these are linear, we're going to be able to eliminate the lambdas. All right, so if I solve for lambda here, I'll have y over 2x. If I solve for lambda here, I'll have lambda is equal to x over 8y. And so since this expression, y over 2x is equal to lambda, and this expression, 8x over 8y is equal to lambda, we'll set them equal to each other because they're equal to the same thing. And if we do that, then we'll just cross multiply here. So we'll have 8y squared over 2 is equal to x squared. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So um, we'll simplify that in a moment. Um, so now I'm going to, since I solve for x squared, I'm going to take that x squared, I'm going to plug that into the constraint equation. So I get to just plug this entire quantity into the constraint equation because it's already solved for x squared. So that's convenient. So as I said, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So x squared is equal to 4y squared. So I'm going to take that 4y squared and plug that into the constraint equation. Now I don't remember, I don't have to square this because I've already solved for x squared. So now I have 4y squared plus 4y squared is equal to 16. So I'll have 8y squared is equal to 16. I'll divide by, I could divide by 8 and I'll have y squared is equal to 2. So you can get y is equal to plus or minus root 2. And here you need, really need to remember that, um, that plus or minus. Or I can move the 16 over, factor out the 8, and then factor out the difference of squares here. That's y squared minus root 2 squared, quantity squared. And so here you see that you get plus or minus root 2. All right, so since um, I'm going to look at the cases, since y is equal to minus root 2 in one case, I'll plug that in here. So I have x squared is equal to 4y squared. I got that from this equation here. So I'll plug y equals minus root 2 into this equation. And if I square that uh, minus root 2, if I square that, I get a 2. 4 times 2 is 8, so x squared is equal to 8. So I take the square root of both sides, and I have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 8. So when y is equal to minus root 2, I get two values. So that means we're going to get two points. I'll put them up here. That's so... When x was minus root 2, we had minus root 8. And when x was minus root 2, we also had positive root 8. I'll put that up there. Likewise, in the case that y is equal to root 2, I'll plug that back into this equation. 
root 2 squared is 2, so 4 times 2 is 8, so I have x squared is equal to 8, so I have x is equal to plus or minus root 8. So when y is root 2, we get two possible values. When y is root 2, we get minus root 8, and when y is root 2, we get positive root 8. Now I could simplify these root 8s, but um, it turns out it'll be more convenient for me to leave them as it is. So now we have to check for max mins, and so I'm going to take these values, and I'm going to plug them into the original function, and then I'm going to look for the largest and smallest values to classify my max mins. So I will plug these values into the function. The function is f of x, y is equal to x times y. So I'm setting up my um, substitutions here with all these parentheses. I plug the values in. So let's see, minus root 8 times minus root 2. So minus times minus is going to give us a plus. So that's going to give us 8 times 2 is 16. So the square root of 16 is 4. And then you'll see um, I just follow that down the line, except here I'll get a negative because there's only one negative sign. So I'll have a negative root 16, so that's negative 4. Likewise, I only have one negative sign with the root 8, so I get a negative root 16, which is a negative 4. And here, these are both positive, so root 2 times root 8 is 2 times 8 is 16, root 16 is 4. So that means I have maximums where I have the greatest values, the largest values, so those are where the 4s are, and minimums where the minus 4s are. Um, clearly, 4 is bigger than minus 4. So that means I have ma um, maximum values uh, at minus root 8, minus root 2, I have a max, and uh, another max at root 8, root 2 at that point, and then I have mins at root 8, minus root 2, and a minimum at minus root 8, root 2 um, for this function constrained to this ellipse. And these are the values where we have the max and mins. All right, good luck.